Every IG nephropathy patient asks me the same question. What do I do right now to stop my kidneys from failing? Well, here are five steps based on the latest guidelines and clinical trials. And these are the exact action plan I give every patient in my clinical practice. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board-certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Now, this is the final episode of IG Nephropathy Masterclass. We've covered the science, the labs, the treatments, and the lifestyle changes. Now, I'm bringing it all together into one actionable roadmap. Simple, clear, evidence-based. If you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button. You are committed to taking control of your kidney health. And if you haven't watched episodes one through five, that's okay. This action plan works standalone, but you'll get even more value by understanding the science behind it. Links to the full series are in the description. All right, let's dive in to the five key steps. Step number one is know your numbers. This isn't just about getting labs done. It's about understanding them. The big three numbers are proteinuria, which is your albumin creatinine ratio or your total urine protein creatinine ratio. What's the target? To keep it less than 0.5 grams per day in the best case scenario. Number two is EGFR or kidney function. Target is to keep a stable slope, meaning it's not declining rapidly year after year. Blood pressure. What's the target? Less than 120 over 80. Now, how to track these trends? First and foremost is don't just look at one lab results. Create a simple tracking system. I tell my patients, use a spreadsheet or notebook. Nowadays, with most health plans and hospitals, they have electronic systems that let you track automatically. But you want to log your numbers every three to six months. What was the date? What was the albumin creatinine ratio in grams per day? What's the kidney function or EGFR? What's the blood pressure like? What you want to see ideally, is that protein in the urine is going down, that the EGFR is staying stable or is getting better, that the blood pressure is consistently under 120 over 80. Remember, this is your report card. You want to use the Ig nephropathy prediction tool that we talked about in the previous videos. Every three to six months when you get your new labs, you want to go to the link that I've provided for you. It's QX. MD 499. What you're going to do on this website is you're going to plug in your protein in the urine, your EGFR, your blood pressure, your MEST C score from your kidney biopsy, and you're going to see your five year risk of kidney failure. Why does this matter? Because you're not guessing anymore. You're using data to guide your decisions. If your risk is trending down, you're winning. If your risk is staying high, it's time to escalate the treatment. Set reminders, lab appointments every three months if you're at higher risk, daily blood pressure checks at home, same time every day, I prefer morning and evening, quarterly prediction tool calculations. Just keep in mind, you are the CEO of your kidney health and CEOs make data-driven decisions. How do you track your numbers? Common Excel, app or paper. I want to know what you're using and if your health system provides all this data for you, great. If they use Epic, for example, you can see it yourself. But let's share these systems and ideas to help others on this channel learn the best tools. Now, step number two, maximize your foundation. Remember, most IG nephropathy patients are undertreated, not because their doctor is bad, but because medications aren't pushed to the optimal dosages. Foundation number one, ACE inhibitors or ARB. Are you on one? Yes, good. But are you on the maximal tolerated dose? Most patients are on low doses like lisinopril 10 milligrams when they could tolerate lisinopril 20 or 40 milligrams. How to know if you're maxed out? Your doctor should titrate up your medications and you know that it's too much if you're having dizziness from low blood pressure, if you got a dry cough, which is an ACE inhibitor side effect, if your potassium is too high, meaning hyperkalemia, then you got to back down a little bit. That's your maximal tolerated dose. Number two is SGLT2 inhibitors. This is a non-negotiable per the 2021 
KDGO guidelines. If you're not on one, ask your doctors, why am I not on an SGLT2 inhibitor? The DAPA CKD trial showed it reduced his kidney failure risk by 30 to 40%. Common excuses are, you don't have diabetes. It doesn't matter. SGLT2 inhibitors protect kidneys in every single person with CKD. They're expensive. Keep in mind there are patient assistant programs now. Ask your doctor or call the manufacturer or go to their website. I haven't heard of them. Bring the research. Print the DAPA CKD trial abstract. Number three is blood pressure control. You want to target less than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. Daily home monitoring is mandatory. If you're not hitting your targets with your RAS inhibitor alone, add something. Talk to your doctor. A calcium channel blocker like amlodipine, a diuretic like hydrochlorothiazide. Your nephrologist should help you hit the timeline, optimize tier one, and wait about three to six months. Check labs. If your protein in the urine drops below 0.5 grams per day, great. If not, move to step number three. All right. If you're on both an ACE inhibitor, or ARB, and an SGLT2 inhibitor, comment below so I know what's happening and how we can encourage others to do the same. Let's talk about targeted therapy add-ons. This is a step for patients who are optimized on tier one for three to six months, still have protein in the urine that's above one gram per day. They have high risk features like messed C score or declining EGFR. Now, your two main options here is option number one is nefecon or budesonide tarpeo as a treatment. Why does it work and how does it work? It targets the gut. This is where IG nephropathy starts. Remember the HIT hypothesis we talked about? This is HIT number one. It reduces the production of faulty IG nephropathy. What's the evidence? The Nephilgard trial. What it showed was that there was a 5 mil per min per 1.73 meter squared better kidney function preservation. In other words, there was a 5 point difference that was in favor of budesonide in terms of preserving your kidney function over two years. And there was also a significant protein in the urine reduction. Who is it for? People who have protein in the urine greater than one gram per day who have a kidney function greater than 35 mils per minute. How long do you use it? Nine months. Option number two is sparsentin, also known as filspari. How does this one work? Well, it's a dual blocker. It's an angiotensin and endothelin blocker, and it's more potent than the ARB alone. Remember, if you're on ARB, you would stop that to go on filspari. So what's the evidence? The PROTECT trial, what it showed was there was a 40% greater protein reduction at 110 weeks versus herbicidin. Who is it for? Once again, protein in the urine greater than one gram per day, kidney function or EGFR greater than 30 mils per minute, and you're going to replace your ACE inhibitor or ARB with Sparsent. Now, I always get asked about this. How do I talk to my doctor? Well, you want to bring your lab trends to your kidney doctor. Talk to them. I've been optimized on tier one for six months. My protein in the urine is 1.5 grams per day. Based on the Nephilgard and Protect trials, am I a candidate for Nephicon and Sparsentin? And I know there's insurance battles. If denied, you can file a prior auth appeal can cite the clinical trial evidence. But keep in mind, many manufacturers have patient assistance programs. Don't give up. Step number four is to live a kidney-friendly lifestyle. Medications, remember, are only half the battle. The four pillars of lifestyle here in IG nephropathy is number one, sodium control. You got to target less than two grams per day. This is the most important dietary change. How? Cook at home. Read the labels. Make sure they're less than 140 milligrams per serving. Avoid restaurant meals or ask for no salt. Use herbs and spices instead of salt. Remember the 80-20 rule. Be strict 80% of the time. One high sodium meal per week won't derail you. Number two is protein moderation. Target 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, preferably 
plant-based proteins. So for a 70 kilogram male, which is about 154 pounds, you're aiming for around 56 grams of protein per day. Water sources, egg whites, chicken, turkey, fish, tofu, legumes, but not too much, but also not too little. Number three is the plant predominant diet. The kidney friendly plate of 50% is non-starchy vegetables, 25% is lean proteins, and 25% are whole grains. You want to follow the DASH diet, the Mediterranean diet, or a whole food plant-based diet. These are all excellent for IG nephropathy. Number four is reduce your harms. Never take NSAIDs. No ibuprofen, which is Advil. No naproxen, goes by the name Aleve. If you need something for pain, use Tylenol. Most importantly, quit smoking. Remember, smokers progress two to three times faster to kidney failure. This is an absolute non-negotiable. Then there's stress management. IG nephropathy itself is stressful. So use meditation apps, Calm, Headspace, yoga, for example, exercise. Use support groups. There's IG Nephropathy Foundation. You have this YouTube channel with the community forums to talk about your issues, support the channel, and have an exclusive community group to talk there. Use therapy if it's needed. Remember, your mental health matters. And finally, step number five is to monitor regularly. Consistency is everything. Your monitoring schedule, if your protein is stable in the urine, if your EGFR is flat and if your blood pressure is controlled, then see your kidney doctor about every six months. Get labs done every six months. Check your blood pressures at home, preferably morning and evening. And if you're a higher risk, protein in the urine greater than a gram per day. Kidney function is declining. See your nephrologist every three months. Get your labs done every three months. Check your blood pressures daily at home. And remember, if you're starting a new medication, you want to get labs done shortly after, somewhere around four weeks or so after starting, because you want to see the effects on your kidney function markers, on your potassium. So you might need to adjust the dosage if it's needed. And if you have a flare, meaning you got blood in the urine after an infection, get your labs immediately. Tell your kidney doctor. And remember, between visits, Join support communities, the IG Nephropathy Foundation, the Nefcure Kidney International, Reddit's got r slash kidney disease. The most important thing is you are not alone in this. Here's the shift that I want you to make after watching this. You are not a victim of IG Nephropathy. You are the CEO, the chief executive officer of your kidney health. And remember, CEOs make data-driven decisions. They track KPIs, key performance indicators. For you, those are protein in the urine or proteinuria, EGFR, blood pressure. CEOs, they delegate their tasks. You delegate the medical expertise to your nephrologist, but you remain in control of your strategy. CEOs adjust based on results. If your protein in the urine isn't dropping, you escalate. You ask about tier two therapies. If your blood pressure is high, you adjust. You add a medication. You cut more sodium. You exercise. You sleep better. When you adopt this identity, the fear subsides. You're no longer passively waiting for kidney failure. You're actively preventing it. I've seen this pre transformation in my practice time and time and time again. Patients who take control early, who track their numbers religiously, who advocate for themselves with their doctors, who implement every step of this action plan. Those are the patients who stabilize. Let me tell you about one of my patients. I'll call her Sarah. She came in with a protein in the urine of 2.5 grams and a kidney function of 55. She was terrified. We implemented all five steps. She tracked her numbers monthly. She pushed her doctors to optimize her medication. She cut her sodium to less than two grams. She showed up to every appointment with questions. A year later, her protein in the urine is 0 0.6 grams per day. Kidney function is 54. And this is what taking control looks like. For those of you watching, which of these five steps that I've talked about today are you ready to implement first? Let me know in the comments below. And if this masterclass has helped you to understand IG nephropathy,
and gave you a clear path forward, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It tells YouTube to show this series to more people who need it. Subscribe so that you never miss my kidney health content, the longevity and nutrition and wellness content. And every single week, I post two episodes to help you advance your knowledge and help you to live a longer, better life. Lastly, I want to hear from you. If you've made it through all six episodes, let me know which one of these helped you to change the most. What are you going to go ahead and change? Lastly, just remember, IG is manageable. You have science, you now have an action plan, and you have a community of people in the comments, in the community section of the channel. You are not alone. You are absolutely the CEO of your kidney health. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to practice kindness and gratitude to others and to yourself by taking care of your health. I'll see everyone next time.